So uh, um, my name is Maarten Zijnstra. I'm a, a copyright lawyer and information professional. I have a uh, one person consultancy firm um, for the public sector where I give advice to mostly land institutions on uh, intellectual property and on information management. Um, I've been a member of the Netherlands Creative Commons community for over a decade. Uh, I chair the Netherlands Association Open Nederland, which is an uh, advocacy organization for everything open, but mostly where Creative Commons licenses are involved. I'm also the, uh, the copyright advocate for the Netherlands organization of the archive sector. And I'm also the national coordinator for Knowledge Right 21, which is a, a, a program that uh, tries to uh, improve access to knowledge in uh, mostly Europe. So all my work uh, involves access to information, knowledge, and culture. <laughs> So I'd like to turn this question around. Open GLAM should not be thought of having benefits. Um, open GLAM is a necessity uh, of a disbalanced copyright framework that favors the rights of the creator over the needs of society. Open GLAM is a ne necessary initiative that helps GLAM, GLAMs to achieve their public missions and provide access to our shared culture her and, and heritage. Um, and it also is a way to keep our um, governments accountable. Um, but having having said that, Open Glam, of course, does provide a good body of structured evidence um, that shows that our society uh, uh, needs the access to heritage and that this heritage is not being used to disadvantage the, the, the needs of the creator and their rights holders. Um, we see that the stories where uh, where open heritage and open glam is being used um, that disadvantage um, rights holders or, or creators are, are very few apart and um, uh, especially given the size of the the heritage collections uh, what we do need is to make is to, is to make the benefits of, of sharing heritage more explicit um, having access to our heritage is one of the most important things or ways to learn about our history and to contextualize the, the current needs of our society and our current debates and struggles in, in, in public debate. Um, it, uh, open Glamour allows us to celebrate the creation of our ancestors and build upon, upon their works and to find novel ways to express ourselves and, and to further our, our own dialogues. Um, so it's of vital importance to have more open, open heritage, um, not only in, in, in the sense of uh, of Creative Commons licenses or Creative Commons licensed heritage, but also just having access to heritage. Well, as I said before, there's a lot of um, a lot of barriers in the in the legal aspect, but there's also a barrier in the understanding of how heritage is being used by our society. Um, there is this um, prevalent fear that heritage somehow access to heritage somehow hurts the creator and rights holders and 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 this this fear dominates the public discourse um, but in, in practice we see that this is only applicable for a very tiny fraction of our heritage collections um, and even then it's based on 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 even more fringe cases and exceptions and theoretical cases so i think this fear for um, what what heritage does in in society is a uh, is is a, is a big barrier so what's the consequence of this fear is that this uh, leads to not making heritage available at all, uh, let alone under a CC license. Uh, so it's, it's, it slows the adoption of any open publication policies. Yeah. There are two, so I've been working in the open glam sector for more, for over a decade. And there are a couple of things that opened my eyes uh, more than 10 years ago. The first was um, a, a white paper that I that I uh, helped prepare was um, the problem of the yellow milkmaid, uh, which was a um, a problem that the Rijks Museum had, where they um, they didn't sell reproductions of the milkmaid by Vermeer, 
um, because people thought that it was not an accurate reproduction. Uh, people were taking photographs with their um, their horrible um, early digital cameras of the the Vermeer, the milkmaid of Vermeer, and it turned out that with those cameras, the the painting was more yellow than it is ac actually is. So when they have high these high resolution um, scans of the of the work, uh, it didn't it didn't uh, match up with their expectations. So and that means that if heritage is not being pushed by the heritage institutions on, on the places where heritage is enjoyed, um, mostly on the internet, um, then it can lead to all kinds of misunderstandings of heritage. So what the, uh, the Rijks Museum did was um, very actively push all their public domain works on the internet on the most high and the best resolution possible to really open up their, their, their collection and uh, be a pioneer in that sense, just to push the yellow milkmaid back down in the search results and have their proper milkmaid uh, high up in the research results. Another, another, um, another uh, case where that really opened up my eyes and opened lab was I was doing a collaboration back in 2011, 2012 um, with Wikimedia Commons and, and some volunteers there. And um, one volunteer, one, a, a Dutch volunteer called Multichill, um, that's his username, um, was responsible for over half of all openly access, accessible, just openly licensed videos on Wikimedia Commons. So there's one person, right? Um, in, in, and, um, and this huge impact that this one person could have just by uploading those openly licensed videos is huge. So um, back in 2012, if you came across a video on um, on Wikipedia, the chances were one in one in two that it was a Dutch video because it was uploaded by him. So we, I really opened my eyes that there's a lot of work to do, and we have done a lot of work in the past ten years on this. My advice would be to just start, start small, start by organizing your collection. Um, create a way to document uh, the right status of your um, of your collection use standards like rights statements.org and creative commons licenses and then start with the public domain and 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 works where you know you are the rights holder and just make them available and wait for a year and see what the impact is and you will you will see that the impact is um, is is large and the, the risks are, are are tiny and then you can start up thinking about uh, opening up more of your collection, starting discussions with your um, with your peers, uh, with your um, with the creators of the collection to open up more.